Welcome again to my class. So, the next topic. As we have done that there is chemical bonding and we did how the electrovalent or ionic bond is formed, we have come to understand that the stable electronic configuration is the basic concept behind the electrovalent bonding. Right? And when there is electrovalent bonding or ionic bonding between a metal and a non-metal, we get an ionic or electrovalent compound. So, generally all the salts are ionic or electrovalent compounds. So now there is a need to learn about the characteristics of these compounds. So, in this class, I am going to explain to you that what are the characteristics or properties of ionic or electrovalent compounds. So, first of all, we come to their physical nature. So, in physical nature, they are solids and brittle. Solid and brittle, it means they are solids but they can break easily, right? They are solids because of the strong electrostatic forces of attraction or inter-ionic forces of attraction. Then crystal lattice. As I have already told you in my previous video that the ionic compound doesn't exist as a molecule. So what is a crystal lattice? In a crystal lattice, you can see I have drawn this crystalline diagram of sodium chloride. So it is not a single formula. It is an aggregate of oppositely charged ions which are there with inter-ionic forces of attraction. So you can see a network of oppositely charged ions. Each chloride ion is surrounded by four sodium ions and sodium ions are surrounded by chloride ion. So due to these inter-ionic forces, they are solid in nature and they exist as crystals, right? Now the next property is their melting point and boiling point. Because there are strong inter-ionic forces of attraction, so if we want to melt or boil an ionic compound, it means we need to break these forces. And you know children, when something is very hard, very strong, then you need large force to break it. So, lot of energy is required to break these inter-ionic forces between the oppositely charged ions. So, these compounds have very very high melting points as well as boiling points due to strong inter-ionic attractions between oppositely charged ions and closely packed crystalline structure. So you see there is a close packing of sodium and chloride ions and they have opposite charges so the bonding is very strong. When we talk about solubility, yes, they are highly soluble in water. They are soluble in water and generally insoluble in organic solvents like benzene, alcohol, etc. Now, the next is electrical conductivity. Now when we talk about the electrical conductivity of the electrovalent or the ionic compounds, then again we are to go back to the crystalline structure. So never conduct electricity in solid state. I repeat, ionic compounds do not conduct electricity in solid state. Now if you have common salt, table salt and you put an electric wire two ends and you think that it will conduct electricity? No, it will not. Why? So you can see in the solid state there is close network 
and the ions, that is cation and anions, are not at all free to move. So there are no free moving ions in a solid ionic compound, and solids do not conduct electricity. Then what happens when we supply heat? And lot of heat is supplied, then due to high energy, these interionic forces of attraction are overcome. The bonding is now not there. Strong attraction between the oppositely charged ions is also not there. So sodium ions, chloride ions are free to move about when they are in molten or fused state. Hence, they can conduct electricity. Secondly, if you have dissolved sodium chloride or calcium chloride or any other salt in water, it will again pass electricity through it. That is, the solution of ionic compounds is also very good conductor of electricity. Why so? Again, because of the availability of free mobile electrons. So, this is the electron dot structure and this is the crystalline structure of an ionic compound. Now, why they are soluble in water and insoluble in the organic solvents? Children, it is due to the polar nature of water. So, Due to the polar nature, the oppositely charged ions are separated. So that concept in detail is not there in your syllabus. So I will not touch that subject. So till that, it is all about the characteristics of ionic or electrovalent compounds. And I hope you have understood. Thank you.